Hello, I'm Kevin Walton with C2 Reverse. Most videos on YouTube I see on when not to do a reverse mortgage are done by financial people who have not interviewed a reverse mortgage professional and are relying on old rules and data. These, these loans have gone through some positive changes with added borrower protections and for whatever reason are not being mentioned. I do reverse mortgages and I will tell you five situations when a reverse mortgage may not be a good fit for you. But first, it's important to note, older reverse mortgage loans prior to 2016 on the books would need to refinance, if possible, to the updated reverse mortgage to be able to take advantage of the new protections that have been created. So let's get to five situations where a reverse mortgage may not work for you. First is you need funds for a short term, say two years or less. A bank HELOC or home equity line of credit may have a lower rate by one and a half percent versus the reverse mortgage if you're looking for the low fee option. If you want to pay some fees to get the loan, then the reverse mortgage interest rate can be close to being the same as the bank HELOC. But a bank HELOC, you have to have ample income to qualify for them, possibly up to 1.5% of the loan amount as a qualifying payment. So on a loan amount of $100,000 for a bank HELOC, you would have to qualify with a loan payment of $1,500 along with all your other consumer debt payments like auto loans and credit cards. And sometimes that just isn't possible for people over the age of 60 or, or who are retired. This is not the case with a reverse mortgage line of credit. There is no debt to income ratio with the reverse mortgage. You just need to show that you can pay your property taxes, insurance, and other property charges, plus have a little money left over at the end of the month to qualify. I don't remember the last time I turned down a reverse mortgage loan because of a lack of income. A bank home equity line of credit can also close your line of credit, zero it out without your permission if property values drop. That's not the case with a reverse mortgage line of credit. It cannot be closed out for a low property value at any time. It stays open for the rest of your life. A bank HELOC, you also have to make monthly payments on them. Not so on the reverse mortgage line of credit. You do not have to make monthly payments, but you can make a monthly payment in any amount as often as you like. Reason number two, if you plan to rent the house out, a reverse mortgage may not be a good fit for you. A reverse mortgage must be your owner-occupied residence. You can, however, rent out a room in your home, but you still have to live there. If it is not your owner-occupied residence, the lender has ways to find this out, and then you experience a maturity event, which basically means the loan gets called and you have to pay it off. So you don't want to get in that situation. You can buy another property with reverse mortgage money, but you have to live in the property that has the reverse mortgage on it. Reason number three, if you are living elsewhere for six months out of the year. Some retirees live with relatives during certain seasons or for extended periods of time. If you aren't living in your home for at least six months and one day during the year and in good health, then that is a non-owner occupied situation which would cause the lender to demand that you pay off the loan. So how would a lender know that you're not living there for six months in a day? Well every year an affidavit gets sent out to the borrower where they have to sign it and have it notarized stating this is still their owner occupied residence. If you're gone on vacation elsewhere for months and that affidavit goes out and sits in your mailbox or doesn't get returned to the lender for, for a long period of time, they're going to think the worst. So that's one of the ways they find out if you're living there anymore or not. 
So you don't want to get in that situation. It might be a good idea to call your lender if you're going to go on vacation or be gone from the property for more than a couple months at a time. Just to let them know, hey, I'm just spending some time with some relatives. Don't send out that affidavit while I'm gone. Notice I said in good health. If you are ill and you are convalescing for more than 12 consecutive months, the key here is 12 consecutive months, that's a maturity event. But if there is a spouse who's still on the loan and, and is living in the home while you are convalescing, they can still live in the home as long as they want to. The loan stays in place. But when the last occupant is no longer living there due to ill health for 12 consecutive months, that creates a non-owner occupied situation and the loan would have to be paid off or the home sold. Rule number four, or reason number four, promising your home to your children after you get a reverse mortgage. Some families make advance arrangements that once their parents pass away, one of the children retains the right to move into the property. On a reverse mortgage, the heirs must pay off the reverse mortgage balance before they move into the property by obtaining their own home loan and paying off that existing reverse mortgage balance. In some cases, if the heir is 60 years or older, we have done a reverse mortgage loan for them to pay off their parents' reverse mortgage if there's ample equity. But again, when all borrowers on the loan no longer occupy the property, the loan must be paid off. Reason number five, if you want to leave all your equity to your kids. I run into this frequently. I was at a social function talking to one of the guests and told them I do reverse mortgage. And the guest said her mother had one of these loans and couldn't believe all the fees they were charging every single month. She looked at the monthly statement and was shocked at the monthly fees. I advised her that that figure was not a fee, but rather the accrued interest for that month because her mother did not make a monthly mortgage payment and it gets tacked onto the balance of the loan. That's the trade-off. If you don't make payments or full payments, whatever interest you haven't paid gets tacked on to the balance of the loan. And then it gets paid when the home is either sold or the loan is refinanced at a later point in time. She looked shocked and then said, but then there's no equity left over for me or my sisters when we sell the home. The moral of the story here is please tell your kids you're getting a reverse mortgage. Get them involved early on so that they can be on the phone calls with the loan originator, me, and on the counseling call. If you didn't already know, before a reverse mortgage application can be underwritten, the borrowers must attend a counseling session held by a third party to make sure they understand how the loan works. Their kids, financial professionals, and friends can sit in on this phone call, but I, the loan originator, may not. And that's a good thing. It's protection for the borrower. It gives them chances to ask questions without the loan originator being there. And in California, there is a seven-day cool-off after that phone call so that the borrowers have time to ask additional questions and do more research before continuing with the loan process. This is a built-in protection, and it's necessary and a wonderful thing. In, in the end, it's a, it's a wonderful gesture to want to leave behind equity when you pass away to your heirs. But to me, a legacy to leave one's children is how they were raised, not the amount of money inherited. A reverse mortgage can create a bucket of money for people over the age of 60 to dip into when needed and give peace of mind and comfort during retirement years. But it's also equally important to know when it may not be a good fit as well. So those are five reasons when a reverse mortgage may not work in your situation with a couple of added tips. And this information is valid as of July of 2021. 
as time goes by, reverse mortgages rules can change and fluctuate. Again, my name is Kevin Walton. I'm with C2 Reverse. My contact information is on the slide there. If you have any questions or concerns about a California reverse mortgage, please feel free to reach out, email me, call me, text me. I'd be happy, happy to answer any questions you may have. And thanks for spending this time and watching this video. Take care. Bye.